you mentioned you have been here in the Philippines several times. Now that the second International Eucharistic Congress, second time that happens because 1937 was in Manila. So after 79 years, this is happening in the Visayas, which is Cebu. So how do you perceive the impact it will have on the Filipino faith? Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, even if there are only three or four of us, mm -hmm. we are united with the whole church. Uh, when you celebrate the Eucharist, it's never just the local community. Mm -hmm. It's the whole church across all the nations and across all time. Okay. Uh, but when we celebrate the e Eucharistic Congress, mm -hmm. we see, with all these thousands of people, we see a little bit of what the Eucharist really means. Mm -hmm. So that if you are a Filipino living in Cebu, for example, okay. and you go to Mass on a Sunday, mm -hmm. then you are united with people from Africa, from Latin America, even from England. Yes. In, in the Eucharist, mm -hmm. divisions of time and space are overcome. Okay. And when we look at the celebration of the great Eucharists here, mm -hmm. we see a little sign of what it means to belong to everybody. Mm -hmm. Because I think at the heart of the Eucharist is the belief that we are really only human together. Okay. Um, I'm happy to be English. Yes. I'm sure, Elvira, you're very happy to be Filipina. Mm -hmm. But in Christ, we are called to something deeper. We're called to be human. Mm -hmm. And so the Eucharist is a sign of the ultimate destiny of all human beings, which is to be one. Mm -hmm. That's why the Eucharist is a great sign of peace. Yes. Because it calls us beyond all the small identities. Mm -hmm. all the little ways of understanding ourselves, all the little conflicts mm -hmm. that divide human beings from each other, mm -hmm. to find the peace mm -hmm. which is Christ. Mm -hmm. How come we have paid, we go to the church, yet when we talk about the Eucharist, it seems they don't understand. I think often people don't see that the Eucharist is fundamentally a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't go to get brownie points with God. Yes. Uh, God loves us whatever we do. God will love us if we don't come to the Eucharist. Mm, because of the freedom and or we, the choice. Yeah, yeah, we go to the Eucharist because it is a gift. Mm -hmm. God says, I give myself to, to you. you. So uh, we all love Christmas when we get gifts from each other. Yes. But at the Eucharist, we have the biggest gift, which is imaginable. Mm -hmm. Where God says, I am a present. And just receive this gift from me. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the challenge. It's not to threaten people, to bully them into coming to the Eucharist. It's to see that it's the most wonderful gift they could ever receive. Nobody understands that the Eucharist is the best gift that we can have in our life, you know. But everybody was thinking, even the media, is the Pope coming as if mm. the success of the Eucharistic Congress depends on His Holiness. But yet when His Holiness came, mm. last January, He said, don't focus on me, yeah. focus yeah. on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing we have to show is that the church is a home for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a home for the good. It's a home for us all. It doesn't matter what mistakes we've made. Okay. It doesn't matter how we are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how stupid we've been. Yes. It doesn't matter how we've failed in many ways. Mm -hmm. That is irrelevant. We are at home. Mm -hmm. The church is our home. Mm -hmm. Where we can be at ease. Where we can be relaxed. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, a home is somewhere where you don't have to explain why you're there. And, and I think that's what the church should be. Mm -hmm. It's the home of humanity. And often people think that you can only come to the Eucharist because you've obeyed all the rules mm -hmm. or because you're a good Catholic. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. It's above all the bad Catholics, people like me, uh -huh. you know? It, it's our home. Yes. Uh, and when people get that sense of unconditional welcome, mm -hmm. then maybe they can come to church, 
come to the Eucharist, relax, and know that they are there with just as much right as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And know that the acceptance is unconditional. Mm -hmm. uh, Pope Francis is, is, is beginning this year of mercy. This year of mercy is. And mercy says you're all the time. With the year of mercy, so not only good people, even the bad people, even the you know, non-believers should be given a chance. Especially. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the people that Jesus chose to be his apostles. Yes. He didn't take the most impressive people. Yes. He chose Peter, the rock. <laughs> but he was a wobbly rock. Yes, yes. He was weak. Yes. And he denied his Lord. Three times. Three times. <laughs> yes. Jesus deliberately chose him. a weak person to be the rock. Mm -hmm. Somebody who would fail. Because he wanted everybody to be at home, even though they failed. Uh -huh. okay. So I think that the choice of St. Peter gives all of us hope. encouragement and hope. Mm -hmm. Because if Peter is the center of the church, then every one of us can belong. So a sense of belonging is the most important that one can feel when they are in the church because they know they are loved, you know, and they are accepted by God himself, by Jesus mm. himself. When Jesus is baptized, yes. they hear the voice saying, this is my beloved son, I take pleasure in him. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize God takes pleasure in every one of us. Yes. God enjoys us. Okay. God thinks we're wonderful. Mm -hmm. We look at ourselves and we think how bad we are, and how inadequate we are. But if only we could get a glimpse of the, of the joy that God has in each one of us. There's a wonderful priest called Greg Boyle who works with drug gangs in Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, he always says to the kids, God is the one who says, I can't take my eyes off you mm -hmm. because of his pleasure. Yes. The people sense that God thinks we are extraordinary. Then we will feel at home. As it says in the psalm, let your face shine on us, mm -hmm. and we should be saved. God loves us so much to the extreme that we abuse his love. Of course we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he let, gives us a chance to learn a bit more. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, he helps us to grow yes. into the maturity, into the adulthood of faith. We will continue our discussion, Padre Rakdip, sa pagbabalik po ng Power to Unite with Elvira.